We're down at a water in the Tess Valley for three nights. And this water is a special water. It's home to one of the biggest carp in the country. Uh, fish that's come out this year at 63 pounds. And that brings us into talking about big carp and tactics just for big carp, which is something that I pursue in my own angling. Often looking at lakes just with the sole intention of catching the biggest fish in them or the biggest known fish that I can actually aim to target. And there's a number of ways you can target big carp or, or that I do. And the first way is about mindset and having the determination to fish waters just for, in some cases, one or two um, big carp. Uh, almost to the point of ignoring other fish that are in the lake and just solely going uh, with the mindset to catch those fish. And that takes a special skill in a way, but also a determination, being able to ignore other fish with the, the goal of looking at where your big fish or you're most likely to catch it from in the time that you're there. And I suppose the first way of that is to research what you're trying to catch because in my experience a lot of big fish are creatures of habit and if you research these fish and you learn about the movements and the captures of these fish previously that can give you a massive leg up when you're looking just to catch that one fish out of a water. Um, some of these can be really low stock waters with you know a few carp of which you want one others can be waters with a lot of fish in but again you're only looking for that one special one so really as much digging as you can to find out the times of the year where that fish comes from you know what it likes where it sits up they're the things that will stand you in massive stead when you go on there and it's probably the first thing i do as I say, they're often creatures of habit. They'll come out at the same times of year, every year, or as close to that as possible, or they'll come out of the same areas of the lake. When I look at one of the lakes I'm fishing this year, there's about half a dozen swims there that the big fish has never been out of. So for that reason, I'm just gonna discount those areas and I'm gonna look at areas general areas of the lake, not necessarily specific swims, but areas of the lake that those fish have come out before. And that's where I'm looking to learn. When I go on the water, as I say, I'm not looking at areas it hasn't been out of. I'm looking at leading up and, and watching and learning those swims in those areas where I think it's going to come out. And that can make the lake a lot smaller and make your time much more condensed because you're fishing generally where you're going to have a good chance of getting it from but as i say you've got to have that that focus and that drive to sometimes sit in swims for long periods of time whilst ignoring fish showing up the other end but being able to be that determined that you can sit there while other people are catching up the other end or around you but you have to sit there and and, and be there for that one take that is what you're after and obviously that takes a lot of uh, patience and a lot of uh, determination to be able to do that. I look at a water I fished this winter and again, I, I, could, I had a lot of the lake to myself uh, and I chose winter for that particular fish because I knew I would have the lake to myself. So really any baiting I was doing was my bait. I wasn't competing with other anglers. I knew it had a bit of winter form, but I knew my best chance of getting that particular fish was gonna be over the winter because as I say, I had it to myself. It was only my bait going in. I could keep the bait going in. It was local. So it meant that I wasn't competing with anyone else. If I was getting bites, if the big one was gonna do a bite, in theory, it was only gonna to come to me. Mentally, it was quite hard because of, whilst the winter we've had wasn't that cold, we had so much rain to sit out week after week in the rain and the rising water temperatures and the mud, it made it quite a slog. But I knew by doing it at that time of year, that was gonna be my best chance. And sure enough, come the end of Feb, after having a few bites in the winter, I got it and, and 
during that time no one else fished, I knew if that fish was going to do a bite, it was going to come to me. Again, another fish I looked, I, I looked at catching, a really difficult one in a really low stock pit, but the fish always got caught in October. I didn't bother going down there in the summer. I got to September. I knew roughly the air it was going to be. I had a massive break. The first, first week I walked around there in September, I saw it show. Quite a big lake, low stock. It was up one end. I knew it liked that end of the lake and I knew October was my time. And I thought, I'm not going to sit there all summer. It doesn't do a capture. Whilst, yeah, I could have learnt the lake more, I find my time down just to starting the last week of October. First trip, I saw a show. Another trip. And then the third trip, I got her. And it, it wasn't amazing angling in a way. It was just that I used my time to fish at the right time. And, and as long as no one else got her in that time, I knew that I was maximizing all my effort during a time that she was gonna get caught. Um, and, and sure enough, that worked for me. And, and it's worked with other fish, you know, times they come out, areas they come out, all that can, can condense your fishing to giving you the best chance of, of a certain fish. Looking at rigs for big carp and this is where I simplify things as much as I can. I can't do anything that tangles in my angling, partly because I think big fish fishing can often involve long periods of time of leaving your rods out. Um, I've always found, you know, it's an advantage and beneficial to have your rods in place for as long as possible, sometimes even up to 48 hours at a time giving your bait more time to, to work for you and, and slightly wash out and become more acceptable. And as long as you're confident in your spots, I think that's a massive edge in your fishing is, is to be able to leave your rods in place for a long time. And when you look at rigs for that, I have to use rigs that I know are fishing for me during that time. Um, and, and to that end, I use stiff rigs virtually all of my fishing. Um, you know, helicopter style with 20 pound fluorocarbon mirage that um, will spring the, the hook bait away from the lead. Um, again, whether you're fishing underarm or at 100 plus yards, I know that with, with those sort of stiff boom sections, hinge stiff rig, I'm not gonna be tangled and, and I will always sacrifice finesse in my fishing for the knowledge that my rigs are out there not tangled and, and I'm fishing really well. I don't use a lot of rigs. I use uh, the hinge stiff rig. Why? Because I found it a big fish rig. If I look at the last 15 years, probably 80% of my big fish have come to that rig. I've taken it to waters where there's a lot of smaller fish. I think in a way it's sort of so crude and, and blatant in some ways, it, it almost puts the smaller fish off, but it catches the big fish. And, and if I'm looking to single out or target fish, that's my go-to rig. It's stiff rig, it doesn't tangle, it can pick out the better fish, um, it suits me. And I don't want to chop and change with rigs for big fish. I literally want to use ones that I've taken them everywhere and they've caught everywhere. And I find that's one less to thing to think about. When I get to a lake, I know my baits work. I know my rigs work. When I get to a lake, I've got to find the fish. And, and that's the only sort of part of the puzzle that's left. And that makes it a lot easier. I don't have any doubts or worries about rigs and baits, but what I would say, in, certainly in my experience, line lay, and getting your lines down to me is equally as important as any rig I've ever used. I think you can have the best rig in the world, but if you haven't got good line lay and your last four or five feet pinned to the bottom, that will undo anything else uh, in any fishing situation. So when I'm looking at big carp fishing, I spend a long time ensuring my line lay is right. And that's where things like tiger line fluorocarbon comes in, you know, really heavy, fast sinking monos, uh, fluorocarbons are a massive edge in your angling. Um, you know, couple it with something like Camflex lead free, 
super supple but strong, lying flat on the bottom. You know, they give you the ultimate in stealthy presentations. And when you're big carp fishing, rigs that don't tangle, leaders, cam flex that's pinning your, your last four feet down, and then a fluorocarbon or a braided main line that's fast sinking, you've got the ultimate in stealth there that, that is, is going to give you a massive advantage over other people, you know, who are fishing bow tight lines with, with visible mono. Um, they're the things I, I want to spend my time doing, ensuring that I, I'm pinned to the deck at all times and I'm fishing perfectly at all times. When I think about bait and baiting strategies for big carp, I always consider myself a boily angler and out and out boilers really. I don't use a lot of particle. Uh, again, I've found boilies to be far more selective for big carp. Most of the big carp I've targeted, if not all of them, have been boily eaters. Um, and boilies, for me, have always outfished other baits. So when I look at boilie fishing, and obviously it's dependent on the time of year, but uh, one of my biggest strategies uh, that I like the most is big baiting with boilies, but using alternate baits over the top. And when I mean alternate baits, I generally mean pop-ups and different colors. I think if you're fishing, say, a brown fish meal, to be able to use, say, a light pink bait or an orange bait over that dark coloured fish meal is almost like using a single over bait if that makes sense and I think that with big fish I think that can really undo them I think you can have a big spread of bait out either on one spot or two or three spots but to fish a, an alternative bait especially a pop-up which sits a bit more proud than the others and a different colour uh, can be a massive edge for big fish fishing. I think big fish will come in and see a lot of bait. And again, I'm talking about spring and summer times when it's right for using a lot of bait. They'll come in, they'll see a big bed of bait and just either out of curiosity or because it's obvious, they'll take that coloured bait first. Um, so you, in, in some ways you can get away with either overdoing the bait Put, say you can put too much in but having that alternate color will get you a bite regardless of how much bait you've got in often and and a lot of big fish are greedy a greedy fish you know they get big because they're eating a lot of bait and they you put a lot of bait out as fish over a lot of bait it can be ver a very selective way of doing it and i think that big baiting strategy which is to be honest one of my favorite baiting methods it is a massive edge when other people aren't doing it. If you can go to a water and put a lot of bait in, again, at the right time of year, and you've got to be confident you're on the right spot. It's no good putting it in at the wrong end of the lake or, or somewhere it's not going to work like that. But if you get there and you can put in a lot of bait and nobody else is doing it, it is a massive edge in your fishing. You know, fish compete over bait. You know, fish will will come in two, three, four fish, see a lot of bait, and that that big bait will put them at ease and they'll let their guard down more. And, and that is a massive edge. If they, you put 20 baits out and three 40 pounders come in, they might just go past it. But if they see four, five, six kilos out there, they stop and feed, you will introduce that competition aspect into it where they'll feed with less sort of apprehension and they'll come in and they'll mop the baits up and the, and the coloured bait will often go first. I've had it a lot of times where I've put in a lot of bait, fished a coloured bait either right in the middle of it or just on one side and it's gone very quickly, way quicker than I know that they haven't eaten all the free bait but they've come in and taken that and, and big carp fishing, you know, big beds of bait, pop-ups on big blatant stiff hinges it, it, it's it's an edge for big carp fishing without a doubt and it, it's a strategy that I would look to bring in all the time you know spring you can look at and and single bait fishing yes you've got to do it because fish aren't going to have big beds of bait but you get to to after spawning when the weeds up and, and going into autumn those, those 
big hits of bait, um, you know, fishing a couple of rigs in the middle of it, they're massively selective for big carp. So looking at what I've learned about big carp fishing in the time I've fished it, I think the research is a massive part of it and, and looking and, and also the spots I think are, are absolutely vital. And I think experience tells you you've found something that is going to do you know the type of fish you want from and I'm quite one dimensional when I go to a lake I'm looking for silty areas but firm silt generally at the back of gravel they're the ones that time and time again have done me bigger fish I've always found that fishing on gravel blatant gravel is, is too blatant it does bites you might get a lot of bites off gravel the bigger fish I'm sure are more silt feeders they're more um, subtle in the way they feed they'll they'll pick baits up from the back of the gravel in the silt and to that end when I get to a lake that's all I'm looking for now I, I, I like a, to find some areas of gravel just because I'm looking for the silty areas behind them I think fishing over the back of them also gives you the best line lay fishing in the silt is is a natural way of camouflaging your end tackle as well um, and when I'm I've gone there, I could just use a lead attached to the, the marker braid and I'm just trying to land and find these areas as much as I can, pulling back till I find, get the tap in a gravel and then I know I'm fishing just over there and, and that accuracy is, it, it really helps, you can find the spot time and time again, you know, you can, you can cast and if you get too hard a drop, you know that you've got to go six inches further um, you can be so accurate with your fishing by doing that way. And that's what I want. I want to be introducing my bait and fishing my rigs in the same places all the time. So if I'm getting a bite, I know I'm getting back on that spot. I'm fishing over the same bait again. And you know, when I go to a lake, they're the sort of spots I'm looking for all the time. And, um, and as I said before, I'm looking in the areas where the big fish I'm targeting are coming out. And um, I think back to a couple of years ago, a lake I fished, which was a long way from home. So it was somewhere I couldn't bait up. I could only bait when I was fishing. It was too far from home. And, and again, I, I knew the, the big fish in there I wanted. I knew the time of year it was going to come out and I knew the area it was going to come out from. But the swim that it did a lot of captures from was probably one of the most popular swims on the lake. And I knew I wanted to fish in that swim a lot. I, there was going to be a lot of times I wasn't going to get in there. When I looked at that area of the lake, I, I, I broadened my outlook a bit in that way. And I looked at the whole area rather than the, the swim. And when I looked at the other side, there was a swim opposite that was just overgrown and it wasn't comfortable. It was a long way from the car park, but it put me right in the zone for that fish. And it put me there when I knew I was going to get in that swim. What I didn't want to do was show my hand um, early. So I knew again the time of year that fish was going to come out. So I fished around the corner for a few weeks, but I would get up at two o'clock in the morning when everybody was asleep. I found two spots in that swim and that was all I needed. And they were exactly what I've caught off in that lake before. I knew when the lead hit them, they felt exactly the right feel of what I'd caught from before. So I knew they were the right spots. and. I marked them all up, stored the distances in my phone and I would bait them at two in the morning when people were asleep so nobody saw me and, and I would just do that for a couple of weeks till I knew it was right and then when it was right I got in there and um, again I, I had to keep it as quiet as I could because I knew it was going to take some time. It was There was quite a lot of fish in there and to be selective was quite tricky but after four trips um, I'd had fish, I'd kept it as quiet as I could, I'd kept the bait going in when I left, when no one was seeing me and I think fourth trip I got there that day and, and that afternoon I had one bite and it was the big and a common at just under 49 pounds. You know, off that spot I knew bait had been going in, no one had been in that swim. Um, you know, I knew I could get in there every week and, and it had everything, it, it, it had the spot exactly that I was looking for. and. It, I could build it over a period of weeks knowing I was going to get in there and again that's a massive edge you know that consistency is something that 
you want to, everybody wants to look for in their angling.